and Krishna was in so much ecstasy, feeling the love of the peacocks and giving love for the peacocks, that soon he was holding his flute outward and the flute was in so much ecstasy, the flute was playing without even touching Krishna's lips. Beautiful, beautiful songs in Krishna's hands. And when everybody saw this, they were struck with wonder. And at the end of this beautiful dance, the king of the peacocks, with tears of ecstasy in his eyes, he said, on behalf of the whole dynasty of peacocks, we want to show our most sincere love and gratitude to you by giving the best thing we have. And he offered one peacock feather. For Krishna, the love of these little peacocks was something greater than what the demigods offer in the heavenly planets or what the denizens of Vaikuntha offer in the spiritual world. And just to broadcast for all time to come his love for his devotees he placed that peacock feather on top of his head and wears it eternally. The bees of Brindavan. They are not attracted to the honey of this world. Such honey has no sweetness compared to the bhava, the love and the ecstasy of loving and serving Krishna. When the bees are humming, they are chanting Krishna's names. They are expressing their heartfelt love for Krishna. And Krishna is reciprocating. He's glancing upon them. He's allowing them to smell the fragrance of his garlands, this fragrance of his body. And when swarms of bees come together, buzzing, glorifying Krishna, it is the Sankirtan of the bees all coming together to loudly cry out the holy name. Krishna gave the supreme jewel of ecstatic prema to a simple fruit vendor who didn't even know who he was, but just wanted to please him by giving him a few fruits. To Nanda and Yashoda, who loved him more than their very life, Krishna appeared as a little child. He learned how to walk from them. Yashoda Mai would take Krishna by his little finger and hold him up and walk a few steps and she'd let go and Krishna would fall down and cry. And she tried to teach Krishna how to talk. She would tell him some letters of the alphabet and he would pronounce them wrong. And then he'd say it again and he'd say it again, trying, trying, and little by little by little, Krishna was learning how to talk and walk. And sometimes Mother Yashoda would ask Krishna to pick something up and he would pick it up and bring it to her. And sometimes Maharaj would say, bring me, uh, bring me this little pot. And Krishna would st st struggle and strive to pick it up, but then he couldn't pick it up. And Nanda Maharaj would have to come and pick it up himself. That same Krishna tells us in Bhagavad Gita, I'm the strength of the strong. I'm the intelligence of the intelligent. 
I'm the ability in man. I'm the cause of all causes. I'm the source of everything that exists. In the Bhagavad Gita, he showed himself as the universal form, the Virat Rupa. In Srimad Bhagavatam, we learn that a partial manifestation, an extension of extension, is Mahavishnu who creates the entire cosmic manifestation through a single glance and conquered by the love of his parents. He's learning how to walk and talk from them. This is Vrindava. The opulence of love. Once tasting the sweetness of Vrindavan, there's nothing else in any material or spiritual world that can possibly attract us. Because Krishna is all attractive. The elder gopis, they desired that they could also serve Krishna just like Nanda and Yashoda. And the elder cows were thinking the same thing. So through the Brahma, Vimoha, and Leela, Krishna manifests himself as every gopa and every calf. So every cow and every elder gopa and gopi for one full year had the full experience of serving and loving Krishna personally as their own child without even knowing he was Krishna. The younger gopis wanted Krishna as their husband and they performed the Katyayani Vrata and at Chirghat just at the end of the brata, when they were bathing in the Yamuna, Krishna stole all their clothes and brought them up a kadamba tree and called out, I have all your clothes, now come out and get them from me. And they said, oh, Nanda, Nandana, we can't come out, we have no clothes on. And besides that, we're very cold and our bodies are shivering. Please give us our clothes. And Krishna said, no, you have to come one by one and take them from me. They said, if you don't give us our clothes, we will, we will tell your father, Nanda Maharaj, what you're doing. Krishna replied, I'm not afraid of Nanda Maharaj. <laughs> and ultimately, by coming out of the water, Krishna fulfilled all of their desires because he accepted the role of their husbands. And a little later, at Bamsibat, he played his flute and called the gopis to come to fulfill their innermost, deepest desires, to satisfy Krishna by giving him the highest pleasure. And Krishna facilitated that by dancing in the Raslila, expanding himself to be with each and every gopi. And each one is thinking, Krishna's only with me. When Krishna plays upon his flute, the mountains melt, water becomes solid, the trees blossom. When the cows are giving milk to their little calves, when the cow hears the flute, she forgets all about her calf and her ears go up to drink the nectar of the flute as tears of love fall from her eyes. And the little calf, in the middle of drinking the milk from the mother, upon hearing that sweet sound, becomes stunned, can no longer drink. Srila Prabhupada explains, they just weep in ecstasy, embracing Krishna heart.
to heart. When the gopas hear the sound of the flute, they celebrate, they play, they wrestle with Krishna. They jump and they dance. And when that sound of the flute enters into the ears of gopis, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains, it's like a bird that enters into their ears that make a nest so that no other sound and no other thought could possibly come into their hearts. And Krishna personally manifests himself from within. This is Vrindavan. where Krishna fulfills all the desires of the devotees. There's a place not far from here called Mohantira. It was at that place that Kamadev, or Cupid, who infatuates and mesmerizes the entire creation came to attract Krishna. Kamadev took the best of arrows on his bow and aimed it at Krishna. But as upon seeing the beautiful form of Krishna, Kamadev fainted in ecstasy. Krishna bewildered the person who bewilders everyone. Not far from there is Madan Mohan Temple. And Srila Prabhupada and our Acharyas teach us that Sri Radharani is Madan Mohan Mohini. In Sri Vrindavan Dham, where Krishna is absolutely, fully satisfying everyone's desires, it is Sri Radha that absolutely, fully satisfies all Krishna's desires. She is the supreme abode of love. Krishna, who is the knower of everything, wanted to understand the nature of Sri Radha's love. Krishna came into this world as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Radha Bhava Duti Suvalitam Nomi Krishna Swarupam. The one absolute truth is eternally manifested as Radha Krishna, the male and female aspects of the Absolute. Krishna is the supreme object of love. Radha is the supreme reservoir of love. Now they have become one. Krishna appeared with the Mahabhav the love and the golden complexion of Radha. To taste the sweetness of that love and to distribute the sweetness of that love even to the fallen conditioned souls of Kali Yuga. And he especially did so through Harinam Sankirtan through the chanting of the holy names. At the Gambira, at the conclusion of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is experiencing and displaying the deepest ecstasies of Sri Radha's love, springing from his heart came Shikshastakam, these eight verses which praise the glories and teach us the method, 
the spirit of accessing that love through chanting the holy names. One should strive to be humble, like more humble than a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree. Be satisfied to offer all respect to others and not expect or demand respect for oneself. In this spirit of servant of the servant of the servant, Krishna will be so pleased to reveal himself within the name. Nam nam akari bahudanita sarvashaktis. All the Lord's power is within the name. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur quotes Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj that simply by hearing and chanting the holy name in this humble, pure state of seva, of consciousness, Krishna manifests everything in the name. His eternal, transcendental, all attractive form, qualities, the abode of Vrindavan, wherever we may be to speak of seeing it while we're here in Vrindavan. If we chant the holy name of the Lord seriously, we could see that Vrindavan within our hearts wherever we are. We could understand the Lord's leelas and understand our own eternal relation with Krishna's in those leelas. Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam there is no greater benediction than Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda's mercy. Parama karuna pahundui janitai goda chandra Tava avatara sarasiromani kevala ananda kanda These two brothers are supremely kind. Karuna Sindhu. They are the essence of all avatars because they are giving what no other avatar has ever given. So simply, they've come to give entrance into Vrindavan, the Madhurya Dham, the supreme abode of love to everyone and anyone. Baja Baja Bai Chaitanya Nitai Sudrita Vishwasakori. Just worship these two brothers. By following these simple teachings, it was here in Vrindavan that Srila Prabhupada prayed for our deliverance. He prayed for each and every one of us to receive. The highest prema. And he gave his life and soul to make that possible. To inaugurate this yatra, let us fold our palms and bow our heads in profound gratitude to Srila Prabhupada and all our beloved, compassionate acharyas. And let us pray that we could overcome all the anartas of any desire, any aspiration separate 
from the loving service of the Lord. Pray to chant the holy names of the Lord, offenseless with love. Pray to taste the sweetness of Hari Kata. Pray to love Krishna simply for the pleasure of Krishna. And to be an instrument of that love. To show compassion to each other and to all beings. It may appear that we are universes away from this realization. Ananyas chintayantomam. But if we are sincere in our prayer and in our efforts, the grace of Sri Radha, as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, through Srila Prabhupada and the Vaishnavas, will most certainly fulfill that prayer. <laughs>